Hey everybody, it's Chris back with another review for the Blue Collar Beer Gourmet. Uh, for those of you who are unfamiliar with this channel, welcome. Uh, my name is Chris. I like to review craft beers, and I don't like to pay a whole lot of money doing it. Most of the beers I review are around the $2 range. What's more, I try very hard to uh, keep corporate beers out of my selections. But hey, sometimes, you know, I, I, I do uh, have to admit that sometimes I, I can't keep track of all the uh, corporate buyouts. So every once and again, yes, you are going to see a corporate beer in here for a variety of reasons, not the least of which being my mistake. Sorry, kitty. Step on the kitty's paw. Anyway, today's selection is from a brewery out of Utah, which I am very familiar with, and I have to admit that, uh, well, I, I find this brewery to be, it, it, with, with their beers, it's either hit or miss. I'm either really unfond of them or really fond of them, and today's selection is their Clear Days Juicy IPA. And this 12-ounce can cost me $2.29. Normally, actually, I paid $2.12. It was on sale. It has a 6% ABV, uh, 40 IBUs. And this is two months before its best buy date, so it's well within range. Um, <clears throat> in fact, it's pack the U into, hashtag pack the U into at the bottom of the can. Let's see if we got any more description right here on the bottle. No, no, they are out of Salt Lake City. And brewed with renewable power and wind and solar. That's pretty cool. All right, so there you have it. Um, just a little bit of history about the IPA. It is believed that in 1975, when uh, Anchor released the Amber Liberty Ale, they were, that they, uh, I'm sorry, the Anchor Liberty Ale. Why did I say Amber? The Anchor Liberty Ale, that's believed to be the first American IPA that was introduced for mass production. So... There's the story behind that. Uh, as I did say, this beer has a 6% uh, ABV. Normally, IPAs fall within 55.5 and 7.5% ABVs. And with its 40%, it's actually on the lower end of IPAs, which usually run about 40 to 70 IBUs. Now, I'm going to be using my new Belgian snifter glass. Uh, normally, I would not be using a snifter for an IPA. There's two different forms of IPA glasses. Uh, one is called the stemmed IPA. The other one is uh, just known as the IPA glass. It has this sort of strange little wiggly thing at the top. However, when I went to Uinta's site, it recommended using a snifter to drink it out of. And I'm of the firm belief that you should always follow as much of the brewer's instructions as humanly possible. And I also believe in using uh, proper uh, glassware. So if they say to use a goblet for this particular beer, despite the fact it doesn't have a particularly high ABV, normally you would use uh, a snifter for a high ABV beer, I'm going to follow the brewer's instructions. So let's see how this bad boy pours. And you are seeing very, very close to the color of this beer. That's very true to, f wow, it's very rare that the color on the camera and the color in real life are one and the same. But you are, in fact, seeing the same. And there is a fair amount of carbonation to this, as you can see, kind of a wispy head on that. I'm going to give it what they call the beard wipe. And I smell a lot of citrus and a lot of hops. It smells actually kind of pineapple-y. Bringing it up to the nose, it's really a lot more grapefruit than pineapple. A little bit of piney, very much smells like an IPA, as you would expect an IPA to smell. Pine and citrus are the two predominant aspects of the bouquet. As you can see, that head is almost completely gone. It's a very wispy head. IPAs are usually kind of known for that, not having very, very, very strong heads. So I'm going to dig into this and see how it is. Cheers. Hmm. Well, it's, uh, it is juicy. It's exactly what it says it would be. Uh, it's not overly bitter, and of course, I am remembering now that with the 40 IBUs, it's not going to be overly bitter. It's, um, actually, what I'm going to say it is, it's a good, it's a good intro to IPAs, because it's not overly bitter. It's hoppy, but not overly hoppy. I'd say if you're trying to get into the IPA, uh, Thing, and, and I would highly recommend it because at this particular point in history, gang, the craft brewers seem to be making lots and lots and lots of IPAs. 
and though I'm a fan of IPAs, I really would like to see more varieties available. In fact, personally, I've been getting into brown ales rather uh, of late, and uh, I'd like to see more brown ales and Flemish reds and Flanders reds and whatnot. But um, this isn't so bad. This is probably the first time that I've been sort of eh, on the fence about it, uh, a Uinta beer. This is it again, showing you the Clear Days IPA. There we go, without the, the glare on the bottom part of the can. <coughs> so, um, I'm going to put it to you this way. Normally, the beers that I buy usually come in about a buck ninety-nine. This one, as I said, uh, without the sale, would have been two twenty-nine. Instead, I paid two twelve. I don't know that this is worth the extra money. I'll put it to you that way. I think if it was a buck ninety-nine, I'd feel better about it and true enough 29 cents is not a great big difference but considering I'd like to keep them around two bucks I, I just don't feel like this is worth the uh, the distinction um, I'm going to be giving this uh, I'm going to be giving it a 3.75 I've got a 3.5 for being uh, true to form as it says it is a juicy IPA and it, and it is juicy it does taste very juicy um, uh, even though it's not necessarily hop juice and it gets an extra uh, 0.25 for being in a can. Those who watch this channel regularly know that I'm a big fan of canned beers. So, gang, until next time, drink good beer. Don't break the bank doing it. And if you haven't yet, be sure to subscribe, click like, and be and comment. Let me know what you think about these videos. Until next time, guys. Thanks. Cheers.